and check it out. Got the vehicle all done. Got the logo on the side. Oh yeah, but today we're gonna to talk all about how to start your new window cleaning business and the steps that go into it. Let's get going. funny you you get one thing down with this van and then you have to do another after driving the ladder rack makes noise it's uh the van has been a has been a fun process to do from buying it to putting everything in it but if i have to go back i would just hire someone to do the ladder rack to do the shelving to do the partition and just to take care of all the things like that i would say i wasted more time on it than i really should have um, but I'm happy with how everything turned out overall. So that will be a separate video, but this video, what I'm going to go into is how to start a window cleaning business. As far as the basics, almost like a business plan, kind of not really, I'm not going to touch on everything in a business plan with a business plan. There's no right or wrong way to do a business plan, but you basically want to outline what you're doing, some of the processes, your goals, your clients, um, just kind of the whole gamut and really, really describe what you want to do and kind of set goals for years on in. I'm not going to talk a lot about goals and different stuff like that, but I'm going to talk to you about how I set up peer professional window cleaning. Okay. I even have notes. That's how, that's how organized I am. Okay. So one of the first things to do is pick your main services. Okay. So for me, I already knew I was going to be doing window cleaning uh, for sure. What were the extra add-ons? The only extra add-ons that I'm doing with this business is gutter cleaning and solar panel cleaning. This is not something that I will be marketing for. I won't be marketing for solar panel cleaning at all. We did solar panel cleaning with 2020. There wasn't really a whole lot of outreach for it for particularly that, but it's a great add-on if you're at a house, they have solar panels, you have a water fed pole, which makes it the easiest. And then, um, yeah, so I don't try to go out and get that business, but I am doing it. Gutter cleaning, that's another one. I'm never gonna market for gutter cleaning. It's just something as an add-on. So I have the tools. I'm not gonna be doing extreme gutter jobs. I won't be doing a whole apartment complexes. I will be more choosy on the solar panel and gutter cleaning stuff. On like window cleaning, I am doing everything except for high rise. That is what I'm doing. Okay. So that's, that's your main services. Decide on that when you are starting to figure out your business now, because for me, knowing I was going to be a window cleaner, it's not that hard, but for you, you're deciding on what you want to do. Maybe you want to add pressure washing. Maybe you want to add soft washing. Those are all things that you can do as well. The next category that we're going to look at is researching your target customers with this new business, who am I going after? Okay. I'm going after residential and commercial uh, clients for residential. It's pretty much the whole entire gamut. You know, I'm going after anything residential that comes through or that uh, comes up. It's, it's really nothing from there for commercial storefront stuff. I'm doing everything except for high rise, you know, as far as who I'm going after, of course, a residential, you're going after more middle-aged people, uh, women, of course. Um, that's what I just find is that more middle-aged women are mostly the customers for residential. Of course, you get your families and everything like that. That's definitely what I'm going after as far as that goes. As far as my customers on the commercial side, I mean, it's just everybody, you know, it's just everybody except for a high rise customer. Simple as that. You may want to go into, if you don't know the market in your area, I know this area extremely well. I've been working in this area for 12 years. So like, I just, I know the whole entire gamut of who, who I'm going to go after the areas that I'm going to go after. So you may really want to research your area, research, you know, what's going on, who are the people that you want to reach out to research it. And if you don't know it and you're moving to a new place, you definitely, definitely have to do your due diligence on that. The next most important thing really is deciding on a budget. You know, how am I going to spend my money going into this now? To break this down, I'll probably break this down in a future video. I may or may not do that because there is a lot, a lot to this. It's easier for me that if you ask me, how much is this stuff going to cost? How much should I budget for this? It's easier to answer that question than to say to you, hey, here's the X amount that you need to invest. Now, off the top of my head, if I was to tell you how much I invested with the addition of this car, now this car, I finance, so I'm just doing monthly payments. I didn't lease or anything, so I am paying to own. Um, 
And then, so this car was just about 24 grand, okay? But, um, so I'm doing that in payments over time. And then I would say the rest of equipment, if I didn't have anything, right? And I wanted to do water fed pole and do everything I wanted to do, I would probably be investing in that with ladders and just everything else another eight to 10 grand, okay? Now in saying that, this is the way I did it. I had a lot of the tools already, right? I mean, talk to some people like Chris. Chris got started with like a pole and two squeegees, right? So it's not like you have to have all these things. I'm just in a, honestly, a good position to have all those things. But there's a whole lot of, you know, simple kits out there you can get that I've created, that many people have created, and you don't have to have that crazy startup cost. I wanted a brand new car. I did not want to deal with a used car whatsoever. Some people would not like that idea. But for me, buying a new car was just the best way to do it for me. I didn't want to worry about any service issues with the car for like the first like three years. I just wanted all that to be taken care of pretty much by buying a new car. That's why I pretty much bought a new car. So setting your budget, you want to look at how much money you have, right? And just see what are the different costs. And that's a very good thing to outline in your business plan as well. What are you looking to uh, pay for all these different things? So really, really outline your budget. That is going to be a primo, primo, important, important thing. Picking your business name. Picking your business name is a very, very important um, for me and picking my business name, this is how I view things like that. Do things that make you feel comfortable with the name that you chose. So I chose peer professional window cleaning. I wanted professional window cleaning. I wanted something to do with peer water as far as using water fed pole. I really love doing water fed pole. That's just something I kind of just wanted a part of it. Alex and I were sitting there one night. We were just throwing names to each other back and back and forth. I came up with it. Boom. That's what I decided. So you may have a business name in mind already. Some people use like, you know, their last name, window cleaning, um, or something catchy, really whatever, you know, just make sure that you like it. That that's the most important, important thing. Okay. Next is what is your service area? So your service area is very important to determine. You do not want a crazy, crazy big area unless you have big, big plans. So like personally for me, I service in my area about an hour long, um, about 30 minutes each way. I could go wind up going an hour. Hour is like the extent of what I will go. I will charge extra for doing that but determine the service area. Maybe you look around and you see there's not a lot of window cleaners in this particular area, but it's close to you. Maybe you service that area. Uh, in my area, there is a shitload of window cleaners. There is tons and tons of window clean riders. So there's tons of competition. Um, I know that a good percentage of places are already taken. So when I do cold calling um, for sales, you know, it's going to be a lot of people are going to tell me we already have window cleaner and it's going to be selling them on what my service is and how my service is different. So it's, it's, it's really, really going to be interesting, but definitely, definitely decide what is your service area. You don't want to be going too far, but at the beginning, you are going to be jumping around a little bit more than you want to be because you want to get into areas. So like the way that I look at it as if I can get a commercial job in this area with a bunch of other businesses around, okay, I'm in that area now. Now these people are going to see me working there every four weeks. Uh, and they're going to start asking questions every once in a while. So all I, this is the way I am. I just need to get into the area. I just need to get one job in that area and I will grow that area. That, that, that's my idea. So what is your service area? Research that figure that out. Slogan. Do I have a slogan? I don't have a slogan. I think slogans are cheesy. Sometimes people come up with really, really good catchy ones. I think funny ones are a lot better than like, um, just any slogan. I didn't decide to have one. Uh, you know, I just feel like work when you're a window cleaner, your work speaks for itself. And that's what I want to be my slogan. Just good freaking work. So next, Choose the colors of your brand. What do you want your brand to look like? This kind of goes in with your logo and all that stuff. So choose your brand um, and choose your colors of your brand. I decided to go with the colors you see here, purple, black, this green color for an aqua, white. If you look at my website, pureprofessionalmundoclean.com, you'll see all my color scheme there too. So you want to decide on that. Maybe it's some colors that you like, talk to others, see how they feel. You know, really, what's your favorite color? 
Maybe that's part of it, right? It's as simple as that. Keep it, keep it simple. That's the most important stuff with all of this is keeping it simple, okay? Don't overthink it. So we go into logo. You want a professional logo made. I got my logo made off of a guy off Thumbtack. Um, personally, I, I like my logo. Um, I think it works well. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. Uh, you could go way other ways with this. Another really good website to check out is Fiverr. Uh, F-I-V-E-R-R -R. has a lot of great people in there. You can hire someone to make your logo. You can put your ideas out there and have them make your logo. I really wanted something like what I have. Um, I didn't want anything related to the Stevo stuff. I didn't want nothing related to the Stevo the window cleaner. So you might ask yourself, why did you not call your business Stevo the window cleaner? I wanted something totally, totally separate from that. Now, have I backlinked into my YouTube stuff for this business? Hell yeah, I have. I'm gonna definitely try to use that to grow this business and to help, um, you know, build a website and all that good stuff. Had to move the car. Some weirdo parked right by me in a parking lot. Gosh, someone trying to make a video in a parking lot and park right by him. Anyways, though, with the logo, you can go on some of those great sites like Thumbtack, Fiverr, or maybe you already have a logo made. Um, but yeah, the whole Stevo thing, I just decided not to go with that stuff at all, at all. So that's simple as that. But get a logo, get one that you love. You know, shoot them all your ideas. Don't hold back. Give them all your ideas. This is your logo. Make it what you want to make it, okay? You know, but think about how that logo is going to look on hats, shirts, how you're going to brand it, how it's going to look on a car. Just think about all the different areas that logo is going to be and if you're going to like that logo being in those different areas. Branding your business. So we just kind of talked about this with the logo. You are going to want to, you know, have your logo on hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts, stickers on your bucket, decals on your car. There's tons of ways to brand your business, okay? And we'll get into a lot more of that as this goes on, but just think of that as far as, you know, branding your business. Now, after you decide all these things, really one of the most important things to do is registering your business, okay? So I am an LLC. Um, so in Colorado, we do not need a license to be a window cleaner but we still need to register our business. So I have a CPA and accountant and um, I was doing all of this while finishing up with 2020, while being a sales rep, while doing other things I do. So I had my CPA and accountant file it for me. It's something very, very easy to do. Just go online, research it for your state. It's super, super easy. You will just have to, mainly the main thing is just making sure that nobody else has that name. And then once you do that, you get your LLC formed or you get an escort formed and boom, you're ready to go. I would just Google that for your local state. You'll be able to find that really, really easy. Register it with Secretary of State. Boom, you're done, good. Okay, so. The next thing to do after that, if you want to be a reliable, trustworthy business, you are going to have to do insurance, okay? So you want to do general liability insurance at least, okay? If you have workers, you're going to do workman's comp as well, okay? So think about that. I don't have any workers right now, so I am just doing general liability on my own. You do not need workman's comp as an owner, at least here in Colorado, so I do not have workman's comp. Why is it important to have insurance? customers will ask for it, especially for commercial. They will ask for it. Um, they usually want to see that you're at least up to a million dollars as far as the insurance goes. You know, really rates with that really range from state to uh, insurance provider. So you really have to just research that on your own. But that's something you definitely, definitely want to do. I do talk to a lot of people that, that do not do that. And um, it's interesting to me, but to be a reliable business, you want to at least be insured. And then, you know, what we've already talked about as well is just the business plan. You do want to make sure that you're writing this stuff down, that you're documenting what you're wanting to do. And I would say, continue that business plan. Uh, as you go through, maybe every year you sit down and just, especially at this time of the year, you think about, okay, what are the things that I want to work on? Or maybe you select a certain part of your business. Say you have pressure washing, window cleaning, solar panel cleaning, gutter cleaning. For some reason, the pressure washing is not taking off. So at this year, you concentrate on pressure washing and concentrate on how am I going to market my pressure washing better so that I can grow that part of my business better, right? But this is very important in outlining your goals for the business. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Where do you want to be? What do you want to do? Who do you want the customers to see you as? My goal as a company is to be a very um, 
commercial oriented company. Uh, I love commercial work. I love storefront work. I want to be more oriented towards that than really towards residential services, but I will always still do probably residential services uh, over time. Cause as we know, those tickets can be great. And um, it's just good to be doing, it's good to be doing residential as well. You know, we've basically touched on all the things that you really need to do to at least start up your new window cleaning business. Okay. You know, there's some other things here as far as the automobile and stuff like that. And we'll go through that. Um, there's so many, so many things that so there's just so many steps to it. Well, I actually, let me add one more thing. Another important thing to do here at the beginning. And one of the most important things is what you can do once you get your address to your business confirmed, whether you use your house or whatever. You also want to get on Google and get your business verified and have them send you the code so that you can do your Google My Business as well. Most likely when you start up, a website might take a little bit, but you can get your business verified and get on Google and start getting reviews. That's probably the most important place to get reviews. We'll talk about the other places to get reviews, but that's going to be your number one from the beginning. So definitely do that as well. So. You know, we're going to go through everything for like a while on this channel with all this stuff. You know, we're going to go through my CRM, which is job, or we're going to go through my website, which is hosted by nice job. Uh, we're going to go through how I'm getting reviews. Um, you know, already business is open now two days. I have, uh, 13 reviews because I just went to friends and family and I will continue to do that. And that's something that you should do too. You have to use the people that you know, to grow your business. How many times you talk to someone, they said, oh, I knew this person. So that's why I got the job. It, it works in every avenue, right? It works in every avenue. So think about that a little bit too. But, um, you know, we're going to touch on creating your Facebook business, um, page. We're going to do your, know, your Yelp, your next door, just every single thing you can do to get your name out there. You want to do if people don't know about your business, how do you expect to get any business? Okay. So as you guys know, we've talked about this quite a bit as far as, you know, what this series is going to be, but there's also going to be some fun old school videos as well, as far as tools and everything like that. Um, and then I'm also going to do a vlog about the first week of business, which is starting tomorrow. And so that would be kind of cool. I have a full week, so that will be nice. I only have one day that's kind of light, uh, but some residential, some new storefronts. So it's gonna be really interesting and cool and that you guys will never have seen any of these jobs before, except for some over time. But uh, I think that's gonna be the really, really cool part about the series. I will take you through the whole entire thing I did with this van. I've been filming all of that, uh, except for the times where I just got pissed and tired of it. Um, so that's basically it, but that's the introduction to the series. That is the first video. And I hope this series is gonna be very, very helpful for all you out there to be motivated. And if you're already in a business to continue that motivation. So. As well, if you guys ever need window cleaning equipment, feel free to contact me. Uh, you know how. All this information will be in the description and below. I hope everything's going well. Happy New Year. We're in 2021. Things are still going to be rough for a little bit, even though we're in a new year. But I'm excited to see what the uh, year has to bring. Alrighty, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.